What is up everybody? We are back with another BIOS video and today we're checking out the BIOS here on the ASRock Z590 Phantom Gaming ITX TB4. That is their mini ITX Z590 motherboard. And as I always say, this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of ASRock's Z590 motherboards. Obviously with the different uh, series, the colors might be different, but overall the, the look and feel and the, all of the settings should be pretty much the same. Now, if you're wondering, how do I get to the screen? How do I get to the BIOS? When you turn on your computer, just keep on hitting the delete key, not the backspace key, the delete key on your keyboard, just keep on hitting it and then this screen will pop up. And when you get into the BIOS, you'll be here in easy mode. Easy mode basically just gives you all the settings you might wanna change um, before you load into Windows that first time. It makes it really easy um, to do all of that without diving into advanced mode, which we will go into. Um, but here is easy mode. And before I get started again, this is just a walkthrough. We're not gonna go over every specific setting. We'll go into detail on some of them, but this is just a walkthrough to show you the different settings, where they are, and again, maybe explain a few of them. So here we go. So easy mode. Um, the first thing we see here is information on our processor speed uh, and the total memory we have installed. Going down, we have our DRAM information. You can see uh, the memory that you do have installed or that I have installed here, and you can enable your XMP profile. Incredibly easy to do. All you do is just click on this. So by default, it might be set to auto the first time you you know turn on your PC. Um, you just click on it, XMP profile one, boom, you're good to go, and it will show you your profile. If you have more than one profile, you'll be able to click through and see um, more than one profile there as well. Storage configuration, you can see what drives we have installed. We have a SATA drive here, as well as an M.2 drive. Um, you can easily set up braid mode by clicking here. Again, very easy to do. Up here, we have a live graph of our CPU temperature. Um, we have motherboard temperature as well as CPU voltage. Over here, we have fan status. We only have one CPU fan because this is on a test bench or one fan in general, um, but you'd see all your fans and what they're running at right here. CPU fan setting, um, we can change this. You can just click this and go through performance, full speed, silent, standard. Um, by default, it's on standard. I would leave it there. Um, and we have our tools. So we can instant flash, which means that if you wanted to flash the BIOS, if you had a BIOS image on a flash drive, you could do it that way. Internet flash allows you to flash your BIOS from the internet. And then fantastic tuning will tune all of the fans in your system. So if you have more than one fan connected, obviously you can tune all your fans with this utility. Over here, we have boot priority. Um, we only have one bootable drive here, but again, you can easily, if we had more than one, you can easily drag or drop um, quite easily this way to drag and drop our different storage devices. And then we have our time up here, um, uh, polychrome RGB. So you can just turn the RGB lighting on the board on or off like this. So boom, it turns off and then we can turn it back on. So if you're not a fan of the RGB on this board, there's only three RGB LEDs on this board, but if you want them off, you can turn them off here in the BIOS. Up here, we have like our help information, load defaults, save and exits, and uh, dis discard changes. And as you see, as I hover over them, um, they'll give you the shortcut. The save and exit is like, you can hit F10 on your keyboard if you want. We can change our languages, and that is it for easy mode. Um, gives you all of the things that you would want, you know, XMP profile, boot priority, um, fan settings. That's basically all you really need the first time you set up your PC. Now let's go into advanced mode. You can either click right here or hit F6 on your keyboard. I'll go ahead and do that. And now we're into advanced mode. So in advanced mode, you'll have your main screen here, which gives you a my favorites menu. And you can see we have nothing in there, but you can add any setting in the BIOS into the my favorites menu. Um, and that just makes it easy to find certain settings. So if you're always changing a certain setting, you can add it to my favorites. So then it's only one click away instead of like two or three. Now, if you're gonna be doing any overclocking, any system tuning, any changing of any major setting, uh, it's gonna be in the OC tweaker menu right here. Up top, we have all of our targets, which is always good to see um, if I'm doing any type of overclocking. I wanna see if I change certain settings, what 
the targets will be. So you have all that up here. Um, and then everything is in its own little folder, which is good. So everything to do with the CPU is in CPU configuration. So we can go into that. Everything is set by auto by default. You know, you, we can change this to all core or per core. I'll just show you a simple overclock. Um, if we wanted to do it, we could do all core overclock, um, all core ratio, say this, you know, we want to run everything at, at 5.3 gigahertz. So you set it to 53 and then you would save it. Very easy to do. Or you could do per core and you can see by default, you know, only of those two cores will hit 53, but we can change all of these if we do. Again, if you're not familiar with overclocking, just leave everything on auto. It will do it itself and you'll be good to go. Um, all of our different ratios, BCLK, all that kind of stuff here, Intel speed step, Intel turbo boost. Again, everything is enabled by default. Um, all that stuff right here. Um, yeah, all your power limits, which again, if you are overclocking, you'd want to change. Um, if you're manually overclocking, you want to change some of these as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for CPU configuration, which I do like. Uh, again, all in one um, menu here. So we can go back and DRAM configuration. Um, we can actually click through and see the memory information for the memory that we have installed. So we can see all of the timings and, and you know your manufacturer model size, everything right there. Um, timing configuration, um, XMP setting. Again, if you didn't enable your XMP in the easy mode, you can do it right here. So um, by default, again, it's auto. We would just XMP, boom, and we're good to go. Um, you can also change your DRAM frequency. So if you already load your XMP profile, but you want to do a little bit of overclocking on your memory, again, you can just switch the memory to, I think this is 36. So maybe we'll, we want to try to run it at 38. We could set that right there if we wanted to. Um, if you're not overclocking, obviously leave that to auto. And then your timings, all of your timings are here. Um, and then if you really want to get into your secondary timings, it's all right here as well. Third timings, everything for your memory timings is all in here. So again, you're not going to be changing hardly any of this stuff except for your first set of timings. If you want to tighten your timings up, it's all on the first menu here. Um, these timings, oops, these timings right here will be the ones that you want to change. Um, if you wanted to tighten your timings up, that's everything for memory, all the settings for memory right here. And then voltage configuration. I really like this because all of your voltage and power settings are right here. A lot of other BIOSes, though, like the, if you go into DRAM, the settings for power for DRAM are in there, or CPU, everything's in here. Um, so there's different voltage modes, stable mode and OC mode. Um, and then you can see your different uh, CP stuff for CPU. And then you, again, you have your DRAM voltages, all of your voltages, everything like that is, is right in here, um, which is really good to see. And again, you can change it to OC mode if you want, um, if you are overclocking or stable mode. But again, all of your voltage stuff is right in here. And that is it for the OC tweaker. There's also user profiles that you can save. Um, so if you had a overclocking profile, if you had, you know, um, a, a gaming profile or any other type of profile, you can load them um, and you can save them pretty easily there as well. So we'll go over to advanced. Advanced is everything else to do with your system. Um, so it's different CPU settings. Again, like we can turn hyper threading on or off per core hyper threading, um, which is new and I think 10th generation or was it 11th generation? I forget. Um, but per core hyper threading, you can set up active processor cores, C states, all that kind of stuff. Um, thermal throttling, stuff like that. You can turn on or off again. Most of the time you just leave all this stuff uh, as it is, as it is defaulted. Um, chipset, oops, chipset configurations, everything to do with your chipset. Um, if if you are using integrated graphics on an Intel chip, you wanna change your primary graphics adapter to onboard. Even if you leave it at auto and you don't install a discrete graphics card, it should detect it, but you might wanna change that to onboard if you want. Um, all of your different settings here, um, iGPU multi-monitor, we can turn our uh, networking on or off, HD audio on or off, all that kind of stuff we can turn on or off. So RGB LEDs is in this menu as well. So again, you can turn those off if you want 
or on if you want them there as well. Go out of this storage configuration, enable or disable your SATA controllers, and then we can see what we have installed and go into the different settings for each disk. So Sam, um, we have our Samsung SATA drive here. We can go in and change different things with that. And we can see all the information on the drive as well. Our M.2 drive, which we do have installed, we can see information on it as well. Let's get out of there. NVMe configuration. Again, we can just see the information on our NVMe drive, uh, which is our Samsung SSD 980 Pro. Intel Thunderbolt. This is Thunderbolt's um, configuration as well. So this board does have Thunderbolt 4. If you're running anything through there, you can change all the settings right here. ACPI configuration. USB configuration. Again, you can enable or disable every port that's on the board. Um, if you want and then trusted computing so trusted computing this is where you and you set up tpm or p actually it's not it's on the security menu um security de device support by default it is enabled um you don't really have to change anything here i actually thought the tpm stuff was here but it's not we'll get to there in a second um we'll go over to tools again um you can control or set up the rgb lighting in the bio so you don't have to install polychrome sync rgb software if you don't want to we can go into here and again there's only three rgb leds on this board and the headers um, but you can change the different styles and and colors and speeds and everything right here in the bios so you don't have to install polychrome sync rgb if you don't want to um you efi tech service if you're having an issue you can actually send an email uh, to tech service if you want, easy RAID installer, um, secure erase tool, which will allow you to securely erase a normal SATA drive. And then there's an NVMe sanitation tool, which will allow you to basically securely erase an NVMe drive. Um, and then we have, again, instant flash, um, flashing the uh, MEI flash um, for your CPU, internet flash, and then your network configuration. Um, if you are going to use, say, like that, um, the text service or anything like that, you set up your network configuration so it can send off that email. Hardware monitor gives us a live view of temperatures, fan speeds, and voltages. So if something's going wrong, we can kind of see what's going on there. And again, you also do have fan tuning, um, which I showed you in the easy mode. Insecurity. Okay, so here is where TPM uh, stuff is or PTT. Uh, which is called on the Intel side. You can set passwords, you can set up secure boot, and then inform Intel platform trust technology. By default, it is disabled. So if you're running Windows 11, you want to enable it. All you have to do, enable and save. That is it. That It's super simple to enable PTT, um, or people call it TPM, but on the Intel side, it is PTT. Again, by default on this motherboard, it is disabled. So to enable it, you just hit enabled and you're good to go. Finally, we have boot, uh, boot option priorities, set up fast boot, boot from LAN, all that kind of stuff as well. Um, it's all right in here. And then we have our exit menu, save changes and exits, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we also have boot override, which I always talk about. Um, if we had a flash drive installed on here, we could boot from that flash drive first um, to install Windows. And then on the restart, we don't have to worry about pulling that drive out. It will boot to our normal drive. Um, always good to see that as well. As I said, if you want to save anything, um, the the keyboard shortcut is F10. So we hit F10 um, and it sh shows what we changed. So we all we changed is to turn on Intel PTT um, and it shows you right there. That's it. Um, easy to save. And again, if you want to switch back to easy mode, it's just F6 and that will get you in between the two. Very easy. Um, this BIOS is, is easy. I really like AS, or AS, not ASUS, Astrox BIOS. Um, it's very easy to navigate. The easy mode gives you everything that you need. Um, the advanced mode, again, is, is easy to navigate for the fact that, especially like the OC Tweaker stuff, as I said, everything is in its own folder, which is really good to see. So again, if you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.